dark reflection Looking back at me right into my soul I can see your love is written in the fingers of your book The river rises in my emotions, I can't look back There's a fire inside my bones that's starting to burn Welcome to another edition of Arrows and Incense. My name is Bill Olson. I am uh, one of the staff at Harvest Ministries International, a director as well. I also help to direct the the uh, Canadian Firewall, which is a 24-7 prayer meeting online that's been going. We are now into year three, or are we in year four? We're in year four now. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, uh and today, uh, this this program is just all about uh, you know just teaching on intercession, encouraging intercessors, um, talking about some of the things that that maybe the Lord wants us to focus on, shore up, etc. And today, I'm very excited. I have a very special guest, guest Iris Waldner, who is one of the uh, directors of the Canadian Firewall. Uh, she is a lover of Jesus, a missionary, a director of another missions group that we cannot name, and uh, just a darn nice person on all that talent and humble besides. So welcome, Iris. 
Hi, Bill. Really good to be on with you. <laughs> no, I get to be on with you. It's so good. Thank you for, for uh, it was kind of short notice, but uh, that's okay. The Holy Spirit, he's always doing stuff that we don't know about until like, oh, he's doing it now. So that's all right. So we'll just, we'll go with that. Thank you uh, for taking the time. And um, I'm very eager to to kind of pick your brain on a couple of things and uh, and to find out what uh, is stirring in your soul. Um, as everybody who's watching this, uh, you may have or may not have known that there was a million march for kids that took place on Wednesday this week, just a couple of days ago, where thousands and thousands of people all across Canada, parents, um, actually not just parents, there was grandparents, parents, and children who marched and uh, lifted up their voices telling government and those uh, hidden behind the government that you actually need to leave our kids alone and let parents raise their kids. Um, so you were out there in um, Manitoba land um, and you were involved with some marches and stuff like that. Um, so let everybody know uh, your perspective, what happened, where you were, what, you know, uh, was it nice weather? Beautiful weather. It's a beautiful fall here in Manitoba. It was it was really special. I think it's a very important day um, mm -hmm. on Wednesday across the nation um, to see parents, um, people from from different faith groups gathering, um, uniting. There was a uh, march, from what I know, in Manitoba, in in Dauphin, in Brandon, in Winnipeg, and in Steinbeck. I attended the one close to where I live. Um, and so, and there were about 400 people there that the one in Winnipeg, there were about, I think they said 600 people. Um, oh. And so, and it was good. It was a really good atmosphere. I arrived late, so I didn't hear all the speeches, but oh. from what I heard and the atmosphere that was there was, um, it was honoring. It was, the signs were honoring. And yet there were, there were a lot of what, what struck me as when we were in front of the city hall was there were a lot of men that were I've been at, at different rallies and at different um, at different protests over the last few years, and this one um, had I don't know why it struck out it stuck out to me as much, but it it had a lot of men. Uh, there true. were families there, there were kids there, and I think that was that was significant. I think that's so important in this battle. We have bo um, both men, women. Um, different faiths, and so I, I would all around. I was encouraged by by it. I was struck. Um, we talked about a little bit of this yesterday, but I didn't mention mm -hmm. this. But I was struck by just how grassroots it is. I know mm -hmm. the organizer um, in in this nearby city where I am. Um, a guy. There was a little rust on his truck. He had the speaker system on the back of his of yeah. of his truck. He was the one that called the local. Um, the local faith groups. He invited them in. He he was the one who said they were from a from a larger church in the city. There were four pastors present. I didn't. I don't know if they spoke because they came late. I'm not sure. I heard the the um, all the speeches, but they were there um, for a Wednesday morning um, work morning. There was a it was a good it was a good gathering and a really good atmosphere. And I heard the same for the. The gather the one in Dauphin, um, not a not a large one, but for that city, important, um, mm -hmm. and and different ones. So uh, across the nation, I think um, I think I was surprised the most to see the number of groups, the largeness of groups in auto in Ontario. Uh, yeah. That was exciting to see. Um, it's not, but there were there were significantly large groups. So overall, I think it's just an important day to have our feet on the ground um to be part of it to hear speeches and to and to hear and to and to and give a sound in the nation uh a united sound of for the children and for parents yeah. Yeah. that was so good hearing Kelowna uh I have to agree with you there was a lot of men out uh, uh, as we were marching I would I would try to make my way through the crowd and introduce myself and just thank people for coming out um, a lot of uh, Middle Eastern families, um, they were so grateful. Uh, we, we helped, our office helped organize uh, the event here. We didn't have much time. We only had a couple of days. But um, 
I walked with fathers that were there. Their wives were not there. Their children were not there, but they were there. Uh, they they had somebody gave them a pamphlet uh, pamphlet uh, just like a, the day before, and uh, and and then came down and and marched with us. He was so thankful. But that is a that's a uh, you know often on these things the women are kind of left to uh, you know fight these battles. See you know uh, in days gone by probably more so. Um, but it was interesting. I have to agree. It was good to see men standing up. Um, so I want to want to explore some of the 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 generations. We don't. We want to talk about that. There was you know we saw grandparents. I mean, I'm a grandparent. I am also a father, and uh, we saw we got we saw grandparents, fathers, you know, parents and children. Three generations, and we want to explore that in a little bit here, but. You mentioned, as we were talking about this yesterday, that after the march, there was a couple of things that you had felt and maybe were wrestling with that we can kind of explore. But you, the first thing you said um, was you felt exhaustion after the march, and then you also felt like you didn't really do anything. So do you, do you want to comment on on that? And uh, just let me know what you're – let us know kind of what you were feeling and uh, – and then we'll go from there. I think I don't. I don't know if I, if I clued in um, fully until I talked to another intercessor I, um, the next day, and she, or she t- she said I was actually very tired after the march, and then I realized I I was as well. I, I I just put it together that I've been busy, but I but really what it felt like is all we're doing is we're putting two feet one foot in front of another and we're walking down the street it's yeah. not it's not really i'm i didn't have a speech i didn't it's not like i had any responsibility necessarily so so you don't think you actually are doing something that's hard work but i i i think when when um this intercessor intercessor said that to me i realized i was exhausted in my spirit afterwards, I actually stayed home from going to an event and just spent time with the Lord um, wow. thinking I'm just tired. But I, I think it's the connection is I think we and I noticed it the next day on my on my hour on Thursday, all of all of my team, they were feeling that actually um, wow. when we were praying into that. And and so I I think I'm realizing I just want to give a shout out and an encouragement to it wasn't just putting one foot in front of another. It was a significant spiritual um, push. There were some people, I, I know another friend of mine, This I've gone to a lot of these, but she, this was one of her first. You know, there were people that were stepping out. They were, they were, they were choosing something that was significant. And, and for those who've been praying and for us who've been praying, on, on the firewall and different groups, I think it had, it was very significant um, and it did take something out of us. Not that God hasn't replenished it and poured it in, yeah, but just, just, a, just a recognition that it wasn't just putting one foot in front of another. It was making a choice. It was standing up um, in the public square. And I, I don't always know I would speak this for me, um, but for many, I think we're getting used to we're, we're, or we're starting to get to used to, to stand up in the public square and to face and how to do that. Um, I know for the, the protests in Winnipeg, there was some pushback and, and mm-hmm. that, that you, you see and, and some protesters got into conversation with some of the counter protesters that they probably shouldn't have. Anyway, oh. um, but anyway, so you 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 leave with a with a with sometimes not a great taste in your mouth. But I think that's that's why we need to be there. I think that's why we need to make these steps. I think that's why we we carry the spirit of God in us, and we need to be part of these of the public on the on on the public square. In and and so, yeah, just just a, it costs it costs. I think that's what yeah. one ladies on on the hour realized after she was at the protest in Winnipeg that it, it is a cost. It's you're stepping outside of your comfortable house and yeah. and you're engaging something in the public square. And the Lord is teaching us how to do that. But it's not going to be without sometimes a feeling of, OK, that was that was hard work. That was yeah. that was intent. But it was but it's important 
And I was very proud. I was very thankful to see across the nation. Um, yeah. It seemed like almost everywhere there were groups and people gathering and and lending yeah. their voice and their sound. Well, you know, um, when we were taking stands before, you know, during the lockdowns and stuff like that, people, ah, we think that you're wrong, you know, um, lots of lost friends, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I remember at the beginning of all of that, talking to people that I know, uh, telling them, I, I I tend to see things pretty prophetically. I'm not the only one. Thousands more do as well. But um, when I was telling them what I saw coming and what I knew was happening, they said, oh, wow, that you're, that's just a conspiracy theory or whatever. Uh, six months later, they're going like, you tell me again what you know. <laughs> and then, and then, but there was still this division until people started discovering you're messing with my kids. Yeah. Then, then everything changed and, and people have come and stood with us as a result of that. And, and I have to agree, you know, it's really safe in our homes and really safe in our church buildings. Uh, and we can be pretty bold there declaring all kinds of things because we're in a safe place. But the Spirit of God is wanting us to move out of the, the safety of those walls and be just as bold, just as, uh, you know, strong in our faith in the marketplace as we as we are inside of our churches. You know, when when uh, I, I love, you know, so many signs, keep your hands off my kids, your mama bears, keep your paws off my cubs, you know, that kind of stuff. It was good to see that, and and uh, that's what it, there th 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 was the common denominator because there was a Muslim man that led this, and and there was Christians that stayed away because they didn't want to get involved with Islam and whatever. And uh, my my retort to them was, no, these are Canadians, yeah, who love their kids and disagree with government overreach, and we need to come into agreement with that and stand just as Canadians. Um, and, and that's what we did in uh, here as well. I mean, there was the hecklers, but you know, interestingly where we were, most of the hecklers, the people that were, were, uh, I mean, I was giving, I was telling my own story of abuse and these guys were heckling me while I'm doing it. Uh, but they were all kids. They were teenagers, young adults with no kids. Those are the ones that are telling us that we don't know anything. Hmm. Anyway, interesting. So um, you mentioned afterwards, like you, you you felt this drain, but there was a a washing that took yeah. place afterwards. Well, here I here I'm gonna. I woke up on Thursday mornings as I often I wake up often with a verse or a song because I lead I lead an hour on the firewall on Thursdays, and yeah. on Thursday uh, evening I felt the Holy Spirit remind me of a song called "Here Is Love," and mm -hmm. it's an old hymn. And then I heard it again in my spirit the next morning. So I played it. And then I was I was wondering, um, I wonder what who wrote the song. And I looked it up. And and as soon as it, I, I looked it up, I put the dots together. Um, it, it was it was a song that was that was known through the Welsh revival. And wow. and it's a song that's been pro that 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 has been characterized with through that, but has also been prophesied that can the revival in Canada will be will have similar things as the as the Welsh revival. And so we listened I, on my prayer hour. I put that song on over us. It's oh. it's really powerful um, and an old hymn. But incredible lyrics, and it it just it felt like it was washing us. It felt like it was filling us. Mm. It felt like it was releasing a sound over not just over us, but over Canada. Here is love, vast as the ocean, in the face of, you know, yeah. what we're battling against with the indoctrination and sexualization of kids. There was this resounding sound from the Holy Spirit. Here is love, vast as an ocean, and He's the he, and um. And that that felt like it even was coming up from the ground. And so we were, I played that song twice on my hour. I usually don't. I don't know if I've ever replayed a song, but it felt like we needed to be sitting in that washing and that cleansing and release that over over the nation. That's and and I I was I was I actually I wrote the prayer points on Wednesday morning, and one of the prayer points was that the roots would be pulled out. 
the ugly roots, the evil roots. But I, I was wondering as I wrote it, what would be the root that replaces that root, mm -hmm. the root from the enemy? And and I, I I wonder if that isn't that isn't the root that that you know gets planted deep into the ground that we are praying as that as that wicked one gets pulled up. Here is love, vast as the ocean. And yeah. that's Jesus' love. His redemption is his 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 love, life, death, and resurrection on the cross. And let that beauty, that sound of his love, um, replace and let that come and wash this nation in the face of of wickedness, in the face of um, you know, it's just yucky. The stuff that we're fighting is ugly and it's yucky, but there is such a, a precious cleansing from the cross and from his love. And so we we come really on and declare that across the nation yesterday god's love and his heart and i believe um that sound of that yeah we need to stand in the public square but also that sound of revival and the sound of um and letting that letting that sound come out as well of come come to the cross come to jesus let let that let hear his love um come to so, him yeah well you know uh i that is so good. And uh, we just encourage all of the intercessors just sit under the shower of the blessing of God. Because as we wait in his presence, as it says in Isaiah, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And we need to do that. So, you know, just kind of going back a little bit before we go forward, um, you know, in the March where maybe some like yourself, you felt like, well, I really didn't do that much. Well, none of us did really do that much. But the thing is, is what we were occupying. And as we were marching, you know, just like uh, the, the spies that went into Israel, really, wherever their feet tread, that was, their, that was ground that they needed to take. And uh, we, it was significant uh, that we were standing in the places that we were, addressing the things that we were. And, um, and never, never think that the little bit that we bring is insignificant. You know, when Jesus was watching um, the offerings at the, at the temple there, this widow puts in her, her little widow's might. And, and his comment was she gave more than everybody else did because she gave everything that she had. And what we bring to the Lord is whatever he's given us into our hands to give, whether it's much or it's little. And when we give it, he's able to use it exponentially. So I, my encouragement to all of us is, is maybe maybe you weren't able to march, but you interceded, you prayed, and it's significant when you add your voice to thousands of others uh, that are doing the same thing. So there was just two things, and then we'll 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 get into what I really am looking forward to. So um, as as uh, Wednesday morning was approaching, and there was lots of. Uh, um, I would say almost fear mongering. People were afraid of, of all kinds of things. You could feel the nervous tension that was, that was, uh, beginning to arise. And one of our intercessors from Quebec, uh, Barbara Tebalt, and I uh, hope you're hearing this. She had two, two visions. And, uh, the first one rattled her really well. And I'm just going to read it. It's very short. She says, I was really shaken by a vision I had regarding the Million March for Children demonstration. I saw the gathering in a city and a black cloud made up of hordes of demons rushing over the demonstrators. And Lynn had sent that to me and, and, um, and they were asking, can you put out an urgent prayer request? You know, because, you know, there were uh, we had heard that the teachers union um, and others, they were inciting people to come and bring disturbances, calling us being hateful. Yet they were the ones that hated what we were doing. Uh, we had heard uh, through Laura Lynn uh, that the teachers union actually paid people the anti-protesters, some of them, probably not all of them, $24 an hour to come and heckle us while we were doing what we were doing. So money, it's, yeah, it talks, doesn't it? So if they were out there for a few hours, they got 100 bucks or whatever. Big deal. But it's interesting, you know, after we this had happened, we sent out the prayer alert. Not that, it, that everybody wasn't praying already because we had already put that in the prayer points. 
But people, you know, Wednesday morning was all about that. Usually Wednesday mornings on the reset, we're discussing all kinds of things, which we were, but it turned into a more of a prayer meeting than it normally does. And then there was a second vision by Barbara, which I thought was the answer, I believe is the answer to all the intercession that was going on. And, uh, and it says, I saw briefly in my mind's eyes the army of the Lord, the angels in the clouds gathering for tomorrow's battle. So this was on Tuesday. And, uh, <laughs> and I heard the sound of their movement. Strong in my mind was Joshua 5, 13 to 15, the chief of the Lord of hosts, of the Lord's hosts. Absolutely. I agree. And we sent out declarations and decrees that the that the peace of God would be over those demonstrations, that uh, the parents that would stand would not engage. And for the most part, that's what happened. It was, in Ottawa, there was some that came into the middle of the crowd, cre- tried to create a disturbance. The police came in and, and separated them. Um, and then there was some stuff going on uh, back and forth. But even at our our place, it was peaceful, except for this handful of people that were, you know, heckling. That's all they were doing. Uh, I noticed after the march that some of uh, some of the people from our position were actually talking to them one on one, and uh, the conversations looked like they were going well. So you just never know what God's up to, and I believe that there is a stirring. That is going on. So Wednesday morning, here we go, Iris. We're going to get into it now. <clears throat> At the end of the reset, it was uh, Art had to leave early, and, and most of the, the panelists had to leave because they were heading to the marches and carry whatever. You yourself had to go. Um, and, and then it, w- it was down to uh, Jacintha and I were hanging out, and I said, Jacintha, just hang with me while we do the transition, and it took a little while for that to happen. But Jacintha started to pray, and oh my, did she pray. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm trying to pay attention as I'm texting and doing technical stuff, you know, trying to find out where the next leader is, etc. But I was getting overwhelmed by the presence of God as she was praying. And while she was praying, I had this very, very strong sense that God was creating a real scenario for the devil and his hordes. That as he's trying to separate us, the Spirit of God is about, and I think is doing it already, he is pouring an anointing on all three generations that were represented in those marches. The grandfathers, uh, you know, the, the, the fathers and mothers, grandfathers, grandparents, parents, and the children. And uh, Hufa, Haramasanda, the devil is trying to use uh, division to separate these ones, but this was brought was bringing them back together. And a couple of months ago, I'm going to quit talking because I want to hear more from you. But a couple of months ago, Dwayne Alexander on my Thursday morning team uh, began to go crazy as we were praying for the children. And he said, and he he's like he's usually pretty staid and kind of quiet, but he just started coming unglued, and it was so fun. He says, uh, he begins shouting. I see kids with Bibles. He said, it's raining Bibles, and the kids are reading it. And then they're they're telling the teachers as they're reading, no, you're wrong. And the kids started preaching the gospel and praying for one another, and revival started taking place. Well, I tell you what, he came unglued. It lit up our our prayer time. And while he was doing that and, and proclaiming these things and praying, I immediately thought of King Josiah, who became king, at eight years old, his dad was wicked. His grandfather was wicked. His great grandfather was wicked. Uh, but he, for some reason, decided that he was going to serve the Lord. And, you know, beginning at eight years old, things started to shift. At 16, he'd pretty much brought in uh, the, the kingdom into revival. And so you, as I was telling you about this, you brought up something. You started talking about the jo- Josiah, you know, the three generations, and then also the Elisha generation. Yeah. And uh, so over to you. I well, want to hear what your thoughts are on all of this. Well, they're, they're kind of new, um, and, but from last week. But back to Josiah, 
almost um, he that was generational. It was an eight year old, but he had a grandfather that taught him the Torah that that protected. I believe, it, I believe, and his grandfather was one of the priests. So it was a gen. There, there was a remnant of people that, in the midst of a of of a really evil time, in many ways, they held on to the word of God, and be, and it says in Josiah that as long as his grandfather was alive, he kept the word of the Lord. So there was a generational thing. I'm just going to interrupt you. I, I I did make a mistake. I said that his grandpa was was ungodly, but that's not true. But it was I was thinking of the kings before him. So yeah. carry on. Yeah. So I I love to me I love that picture of that grandfather and that generational. But last week I um I woke up again. I had another song in front of my my prayer hour, and I heard this the song not last week, not this Thursday, week before. This is the sound of dry bones rattling from the song Rattle, and so yeah. and so it reminded me, um, and it actually is also in the song of the story of dead men. Um, of the dead man that's thrown on the bones of Elijah and comes and it says he was revived. Elisha. Elisha. Yes, exactly. And so I went and read that story and something just sparked in my spirit. I'm like, and I felt like I need to research what's the Elisha generation, not the Elijah generation, the Elisha mm -hmm. generation. And so I, I started listening to a, ser a, a sermon from 2005 from James Gall and my oh, yeah leapt because it was like a now word i could feel it in my bones i feel it in my bones as i speak it it's a, it's it's this generate it's a time now i believe for the elisha generation to step into and grab a hold of that that generational transfer and then and so i was listening to that i'll share some points that, yeah. have, that leapt out at me but before i do that i i as i was just just hearing a little bit Elisha generation, we prayed into it a, ton, a little bit. And then in, later in the afternoon, I was listening to Art, Charlie and Samuel Robinson. And Samuel Robinson starts talking and he says this line, which completely arrested me. I'm going to quote it. And he said, as we speak, we're in Second Kings 2. And Second Kings 2, he didn't say this. I'm going to just tell us what it is, is where the transfer where Elijah goes up in the chariot, his mantle falls down, Elisha picks up his mantle. And, he's, and so this is what Sammy says. As we speak, we're in Second Kings 2. God is releasing the double portion right now. We are in the season of the Elishas being raised up. And then he started talking about the need of taking out the religious spirit at the gate yeah. that wants to stop the prophetic voice. Well, I went bingo. So I, I've been sitting and just letting um, just leaning in of what the Elisha generation is because I actually hadn't really clued in. But um, and so I, I was asking the Lord this morning what what at the core. Um, with the Elisha generation, and I, I felt he was saying the word zeal. Elisha had zeal for the Lord, and zeal, zeal is 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 he. It, it basically means um, he a, a burning desire to please God, to do His will, and to advance His glory in the word world in every possible way. So, a few things about Elisha. He was hungry for the Lord. He operated in the power of the Lord. Come when on. when Elisha, Elijah was told after he that showdown on Mount Carmel, he ran away to um, and the still small voice spoke to him, and he and the still small voice said um, in the in the cleft of the mountain said, "Go and anoint three people," and it was to anoint Elisha as his successor, um, Jehu and Haziel. And so then Elijah, the prophet before before him, um, went and and found Elisha, threw his cape on his shoulders, to signify that he was his success. Um, to uh, and and what Elisha did though was radical, really radical. He had twelve oxen. It says that's a lot of oxen, and he yeah. took it. He butchered them. He he burned the yokes, fed the people around him, kissed his mother and his father. Which, um, which meant, I think, meant that his, his allegiance will be, and he followed Elijah. He followed mm. 
that's a radical that's an incredibly incredible radical move that's yeah. the elisha generation a radical following of what the lord says um, he had a hunger for um, he 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 was he served Elijah. He, it says he was the one that poured water on Elijah's hands. Um, he when it was time for Elijah to depart, he was asked three times. He did not leave him. He for some reason I don't quite understand this. Elijah told him not to follow uh, or to stay where he was. He said, "No, I'm not leaving you." Um, and then he, and then at the end, uh, when the chariot came to pick up Elijah, which is, he got to see that he said, what do you want? And he said, I want a double portion. And yeah. I, and that's what Sammy said. We're in a season of double portion. And I don't even fully know what that means, except it's burning in my spirit. Elisha yeah. generation, double portion and resurrection life, those mm -hmm. three things. And so, and, and so he did get to see Elijah leave in the chariots. Um, he did get to see, and then he, what he did, he went and he picked up the mantle that fell down. And that strikes me in this story. He had Come served on. Elijah, but he went, he didn't just let, leave, let the mantle lie there. He picked it up. He picked it up and then he took it and did what Elijah had done um, previously. He had actually struck the water and the mm -hmm. water parted. Elisha did the same, but I, I I feel I feel it that he picked up the mantle, and I want to I speak that I think over my generation or this Elisha generation wow. will we pick up the mantle? He, he picked it up, and will we walk in the power that God is calling us? And and I, if we're saying the double portion, he 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 walked in it, he stewarded it. He leaned into it. I mentioned this to my friend Sarah this morning, and she said right away, she said, I want to confirm that. He said, we have to step into it. It is coming. Things are coming to a head, and we are a generation that needs to step into it. And she said, I want to confirm. And back to zeal, she said, I want to confirm that one as well. She said, I just heard a, a, a preacher from the USA if the zeal of the Lord does not consume you, something lesser will. Yes. Um, wow. So there is, there is a, I, I don't know, I don't fully know if we know what that's going to look like, but there's a transfer, a time of picking up the mantle and of walking in and grabbing a hold of what God is calling us to grab a hold to and the power that he has available for us in this time. Um, so... Wow. That's so good. We're going to keep digging into this a little bit. We still got another 20 minutes. Uh, lots of good comments on there. Thank you for everybody that's watching and all your comments. I can see them. Maybe you can't, but that no, 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 no. You can read them <laughs> later. But uh, it, it, that's such an amazing topic. A while ago, um, we were privileged to go to Israel and we were getting toured around all over the place. And uh, we went to that place where they believe that the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, but it was also the same place where Elijah and Elisha crossed the Jordan. And everybody's talking about, you know, Exodus and, and the children of Israel coming to take the land. And I'm like, this is where Elijah and Elisha crossed. I, like, I, I was always, you know, kind of that kid in school. They're all over here. And I'm going like, wow, look at that. That's pretty amazing. You know, I'm just overwhelmed by something as I'm getting revelation of it. And I said to Art, I said, this is the place where Elijah and Elisha cross. I said, I want that mantle, Elisha's mantle. Uh, the, the, the mantle of Elijah is, is about him, his spirit returning and, and causing the fathers to return to the sons and sons to the fathers. But the Elishas are the ones that actually receive that mantle. And uh, and so I went running down <laughs> there in their little herd listening to the speech. And I, I went running down to the to the the, the river and I, I stuck my hands in there and I, I said, God, I want that mantle. I want that anointing. Um, you know, however that works, you know, sometimes we we don't understand that there's a cost, and and you mentioned there was a cost that we paid. Elisha paid the price. He was tested. When Elijah was saying, don't follow me because I got to go over here. It was a test. Yeah. You know, and, and the word of God, the Bible says, tests us. God 
gives us a word, and then he tests it. Are we going to believe it? Are we going to walk through? And are we going to lay hold of it? Because we have to contend for it sometimes. You know, we, we love the prophetic words when we get called out. And, you know, and all of them are all about God has anointed you to change the world. And then he'll deal with the rest of the universe afterwards. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm all ready to do that. And then you go out to the woodshed. <laughs> the discipline needs to happen in order for us to be able to carry what God wants us to be carried. and. In this season, I have to agree with Samuel. I call him the prophet Samuel. Uh, there's guys his age, you know, and, 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 and women your age as well, that have been parented, fathered, and mothered by saints of God that have now stepped into eternity. Bob Jones, you know, some, somehow some of these people had audience with Bob Jones went to his house or met with him privately where he laid hands on them and prayed for them and talked to them. And the things that these ones are bringing out, you know, when they're preaching, I'm going like, my goodness. You know, we, when I was that age, we weren't, we weren't talking about this stuff. We didn't have revelation for it. Um, but my revelation, so I'm, I'm at the tail end of the baby boomers born in 1959 when I got saved, I was pretty young. But as I was reading the Bible and, the, and I was comparing it to what how church was being run, I saw lots of inconsistencies. And I saw, uh, you know, pastors trying to do what God was calling them to do, but having to be moved out of the churches about every three to four years. And they would hire somebody else in their place. And I thought, man, I don't see that in the Bible. It frustrated me. And uh and because I was in my Bible all the time and seeking the Lord, I, and I had zeal, I still got zeal, um, I was often in trouble because I was like, yeah, but the Bible says this. How come we're not doing this? You know, like I was one of those insane people that read my Bible and said, that we pray the, for the sick and they'll be healed. Oh, okay. And it says here, you lay your hands on them. Well, so we lay hands on and pray for the sick and they'll be, okay, so um, be healed. Did it work? It did? Well, that's pretty cool. You know, we just believed it. And uh, my generation, you know, like there was not a lot of drums and electric guitars in church before my generation, just saying. Acoustic guitars were okay as long as the piano or the organ were leading and you played all the songs in three flats, two flats, you know, that's B flat, F, you know, E flat, whatever. Um, if you're not a musician, it doesn't matter. We'll just say they're not guitar keys. And then something started shifting 20 years later as the, our generation was allowed to take the platform. There was things that started to shift. I was one of the first people that I know of that actually led out in spontaneous worship on purpose. And I'd run all the songs together and, and we would just go. The first time that happened was uh, at a full gospel businessman meeting where they said, uh, lead for 10 minutes, you know, lead them in, the, you know, just in the presence of God and turn it over to me. 10 minutes, really? Okay. Two hours later, <laughs> where the men threw the, kicked the chairs aside and danced with all of their might and worshiped the Lord, something shifted. And now there's another generation that is, uh, you know, they're practicing their music in the basements and in the garages, and there's new songs about to arise. Yeah. Uh that will overshadow the generation that is being spotlighted now. So um, I said all that to say this. I agree that the Elishas need to come forth and also to make room for the Josiahs at the same time, if that yeah. makes sense. Yes. And that... We need your energy. We need your wisdom. We need to be able you to empower your generation, but also to encourage us, to exhort us to, to, to think outside of the box that we've grown accustomed to. And, and maybe some of us won't ever think that way, but that's okay. As long as we can honor each generation, I believe that we are going to see all three generations anointed at the same time yeah. to do incredible things. And uh, 
my heart for having you on here is that we need to hear from you. So you probably have some more stuff that you need to share and I will be quiet and I'll listen. I do. I, um, I, I want to get back to Elijah's zeal. I think that's what Elisha, Elisha's mm -hmm. zeal. That's what strikes me. Uh, as you read, Cause he, he has miracles. He wouldn't sell out. Um, you know, when Naaman came and he dipped in the water, he was offered a lot of money. Uh, mm -hmm. He said he wouldn't take it because I don't, he said, I don't want to, this was not, I didn't do it. God did. Um, mm -hmm. So he had, he had, he wanted to keep the purity, he had a zeal. But the story I read that morning, I actually caught my eye as well on the story. And we know this story, but I, I want to highlight it. Where, where it's he's actually close to death, Elisha is. And um, Joash, the king of Israel, went down to him and wept before him. And because there was an army that was going to come and invade. And Elisha says, take your bow, take, take bow and arrows. And he laid his hands on the king's hands. Mm. And he said, strike the ground with them. And we know that story. But what really yeah. struck me as I read it is, Elisha, even though he was, it says he had fallen sick with the illness of which he was to die, he chastised the king for only striking the ground three times. Yeah. He said, if you had struck five or six times, then you would have struck down Syria until you had made an end of it. Um, and and I, I, it's his zeal. He didn't, yeah. he had a zeal till the end. And I, I think that's what I'm pick, what I was picking up. There's there was a hunger to see God move. Um, and and he and the other thing that was interesting, he put his hand on the kings. There was a it was not it was not just in the church. Elisha was con, it was connect, connected with those who are leading in the nation, the kings, yeah. the, the 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 in the political sphere, but the, the zeal that he had till the end. He had more zeal than the king did. He had more faith because he had yeah. seen, he had seen, he had seen the angelic armies that you had mentioned that that Barbara had, had talked about in this march. That was he knew that that was part of pulling out this root system of mm. Baal of that contending, which is actually what we're contending for now is pulling out some of that wicked root system and so there's there is there is that and even when elisha died back to the the body that war was on the bones there was resurrection life on the bones I, that story <laughs> always grabs me dead body comes in falls in and comes out alive what a day what a day but it, it's it's something about even even that it still lived and mm. even talking about the previous generation there are things from the previous generation um that that is still alive we call forth that resurrection life and we call forth the dry bones in this nation in canada there's dry bones that i feel the that 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 the lord wants us to keep pressing in not just striking because we're tired but to there's a there's strike five keep striking because he's going to move in this nation um, and the, I think the reason this is so, it's also alive in me. I'm going to, I didn't share this with you yesterday, but it's that this power of God, it's connected, even though it's not Elisha is I was at the Sean Foyt concert and I felt the boldness, mm -hmm. a fresh yeah. boldness wash over me and over the crowd, um, with that sound of worship. And as I came home, I was in a tech, I took a taxi from, um, just to, to where my car was and in front of the taxi, was a was a car with a license plate E P H in capital letters oh e yeah H one one nine which of course I I looked it up enough I'm like okay that seems prophetic but I believe it it was um it was Ephesians 119 and there it's a very power packed section in Ephesians 119 but this section very simply says um I'm just going to read it over us and his incomparably great power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength that worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead. Come and on. I did a little bit of research in that verse. There is actually a ton in that verse, but yeah. I didn't, I'm sure if you've preached on it, um, Bill, you might know better than I do, but 
there's four different words for power in that mm -hmm. small verse of Ephesians 1, 1, 9. One is dunamis power, which is miraculous power, might, and strength. Um, one is the working, the energizing power. It's productive. It's work. It's activity. It's um, it, um, Another one is, it, I think the word is ishes, which is strength, absolute power. This one says force to overcoming immediate resistance. We are in a season of immediate resistance, but there's a because of Christ's power in us, we have power to be a force to overcome immediate resistance. And the fourth one is dominion power, authoritative mm -hmm. power. And so I think that's why that 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 resurrection life that just leapt up in me of Elijah and the bone of that, because it's I feel like the Lord is reminding me of the power that he has in that we have we carry as his people it's it's energizing power it's power that is able to overcome immediate resistance it's mm -hmm. dunamis power and this brings life it brings life and so there's a lot there um but so just there's there's so much more there's so much more there's so much more in the um that we have that i have to walk in but all of us and there's a power and a strength and mm -hmm. i feel like encouragement from the Lord in this season um, to step into it, a freshness and, a, and, a, um, and, and to keep striking the ground and to see him do what only he can do. Um, yeah, so absolutely. You know, there's a, there's a zeal. Like when I first became a Christian, um, the zeal I had was different than the zeal of the, the, of the older ones. You know, they, they were, they were very zealous for God, but Mine was different. You know, like I was outside, I was very bold. I think I led um, over 100 people to the Lord in my first year of Christianity. And and uh, always, has, always had two things, my guitar and my Bible. I wore my Bible out, uh, carrying it everywhere. It was If I was at a restaurant, the Bible was sitting there and <laughs> at the table. Uh, quite often, you know, as young kids, we go, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And everybody said, just want to pray for my meal. And we would pray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll carry on. <laughs> we just did stuff like that. But but that was our zeal. Um, just while you were talking about the generations, I was reminded the other day, uh, or a couple of weeks ago, Mo and I had to go out to JIK in my truck, and the air conditioner quit just before that. And that day, it was 41 degrees. It was warm. And uh, as... <laughs> <laughs> when we got back into town, Mo poured out into the out onto the the, the parking lot. <laughs> it's just melting. And I was I was taken by a prophetic word by Hank Kuhneman just a little while before that, where he was prophesying about the the temperatures, and and that every temperature he was naming had a had a Bible verse attached to it. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? So I wondered. How warm was it today in Fahrenheit? And it was 105.8 degrees that day. And so I, I opened up Psalm 105, went to verse 8, and check this out. It's about our topic right here, right now. Number one, that God is a covenant-keeping God. He says here in verse 8 of Psalm 105, he remembers his covenant forever. The word that he commanded for a thousand generations— that's a generational God we serve. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, his son, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, his grandson. The three generations are named right there. That's in verse 10. To Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. So there's many things that God has given my generation for my grandchildren to inherit. My children need to inherit, and my grandchildren need to. And there's intercessors on the firewall. When we first started it up, I, and I still sneak on there every now and then, and uh, Heather O'Driscoll, which is one of our cohorts on the, on the firewall, she says, I'm like the, the Walmart greeter on the firewall. She jumps on. Hi, how is everybody doing? You know, she tries to be incognito, but everybody knows Heather, so they invite her on. And um, what I love is, especially when we first started up the firewall, 
um, a lot of sleepless nights as, as people were struggling with this new technology and, you know, trying to figure out how their computers worked and whatever. And we saw a lot of nose hairs and foreheads on, you know, on the screens as they didn't know what to do with the camera, where to put this. And you'd see an eyeball. Is this on? You know, it was so fun. But then they would start to pray. And I remember listening to these dear saints. They were, I think the whole team was in their 80s. And they started to pray for these young mums, three generations, two generations after them. These young girls that found themselves pregnant. And they started to pray for them as they poured their heart out for them, asking God to help them to make the right choice, that they would not abort their babies, that God would provide for them, that they would, that God would send somebody to help them through this difficult situation that they found themselves into, found themselves in. And the, the older generation pouring out um their faith, their love, their equity with the Lord to this younger generation. We need them, but we need we need you also, Iris. We need your generation. We need the strength and the um, the zeal that you carry for your God. We need that zeal to be transferred to the generation after you as well. And uh, one of the one of the um, uh, notes on on uh, on the, the messages on here was that the children were bold too, as they said, "Leave us alone!" Holding up their placards that happened in Cologne as well. Leave us alone, and uh, we just joined in with them. But there's something there is. Uh, this is an important topic, and uh, my generation, as much as we have some wisdom to pour out, we need to make room, not to tell you what to do, but to teach you what we know, and then step out of the way so that you can run with what God has given you, and then as your children are being raised up, that you do the same for them. And, uh, and, and so, Father, I just ask that that would take place. I thank you for the anointing that is on Iris. I thank you for the anointing that is on her generation and the one that is coming up, the ones that are, that are youths, teenagers, uh, maybe just even coming into their 20s. God, that the spirit of truth is transferred. Uh, that that uh, Psalm 105, uh, that the spirit of Elisha, that is uh, Elijah, that is put on Elisha as a double portion and beyond, God would be poured out across our nation, that we will see a transference of, of great anointing, uh, the wealth of wisdom, God, that will override the foolishness and the confusion that is on our nation right now. God, we just want to impart that to this generation. God, that as, as we stood as three generations on the streets of Canada, God, that you will establish something and have established something in the spirit that we don't fully understand yet, but we'll see the fruit of. Amen. Well, we got a minute or so. Iris, any last moments, any last words or a prayer that you want to shoot off? Just go for it. A quick um the reason Elisha got a double portion, I think there's a verse in Deuteronomy that talks about sons getting double portion. It was it was related with family. Mm -hmm. He called him my father, my father. God, I thank you for what you're releasing with us even knowing sonship in our innermost being from you and in mm -hmm. walking with each other. God, we thank you that you're a generational God. We call forth those even the dry bones even the things that the previous generation thought was dead lord we call them forth for life yes. for our for the generations we are standing here so many of us because of the kid children because of the children um i do it for my nieces and nephews lord we believe that they will walk knowing you knowing you the living god and will proclaim your name in this nation and so god we thank you that you're a generational God. We thank you for the generations. I thank you for what has been imparted into me from mm -hmm. every, from through the generations. And Lord, we do. We want to see that legacy continued. And we thank you that this right. is your heart. And we, we ask for even greater representation of that in the days to come. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I agree. 
Julie Crandall says, my grandmother was a prayer warrior and my mom and dad are also. And she's on here listening to you, Iris. So bless you. Um, I just thank you, everyone, that, that stayed on with us. And thank you, Iris. I treasure you. I treasure what God has put in you. I honor what God has put in you. Um, you don't just do the firewall. You are a very busy lady internationally as well. And I love the mantle that is upon you and the generation that you represent. And our, my job is to cheer you on, to be an encouragement. If you, if you need help, come and ask, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you everything I did wrong so you don't have to. I learned how to do a couple of things right as well. But bless you, Iris. Thank you for taking yep. the time to hang out with, with, uh, with me and everybody else. And uh, for all that uh, have been watching and will watch later, we, we declare... Iris and I declare blessing over you that God will cause all grace to abound toward you, that you will have an abundance for every good work in all the things that God wants you to do. And that when you turn around and look behind you, you'll see goodness and mercy chasing you down. Be yeah. blessed. And uh, thank we'll you, look forward to having you again next time. Thank you, Iris. God bless you. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.